Give him a break. I'll grab his leg. I knew it. Oh, yeah. This is on Facebook Live, so uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll then I'm doing nothing but headlocks. <laughs> Back drops. German suplex. <laughs> I don't like that at all. That crowd is scared. What's your, uh, what's your number one goal in the scramble? What do you think about first? I'm trying to my, my high five corner sit. So you're always trying to be Yeah. Because I thought more about like my dive unders and everything, you know? Right. But I realized my best position is really go high crotch. It's just a simple hit, you know? Like, and whether I get that from a single leg or a double, whatever you do, you just throw it head underneath, you know? Inside. Oh, like, so if I shoot a single, you just throw it in my head? <laughs> I'll pull it this side. And then, when I'm doing this one, come up. Oh, when you split? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but, yes. Oh. I think more and more I'm trying I to... I not really force it, but... I think more and more my, my number one focus is get my feet in the mat. Yeah. The more I keep my feet in the mat, I think I'm better. You're good. And I can move. You're the I try to turn... Yeah, I turn. I try to turn anything to a low single. So if you high crotch, yeah, and I'm head throwing, yeah, I'm kicking. I'm trying to turn okay. back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where I'm trying to get. That's. I can tell you realize that too. To get back to my high crotch, yeah. my shovel. And just just get that head where I need it. But I mean, just teaching it over and over, and watching all the different kids' reactions and how they're processing. I just, I gotta give them like three or four base things that like, this is what everybody's trying to do. Cause like me, corner sit, I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm fish out of water there. You know what I'm saying? Put some, put some concepts to feet in the mat, 
yeah. get one of their feet off the mat, mm -hmm. weight towards their head, you know. Everybody's saying height wins in a scramble, but <laughs> my feet aren't in the mat. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to lose. I mean, that's simple and plain. i got to have more feet in the mat. <laughs> Actually. Well, with a little bit of editing to this video. <laughs> 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 Yeah. No. Just go to the other, but go to the other I'll, side. I'll, I'll try to stay. Yeah, there. Yeah, like that. That's back to your sit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I normally don't show that just because I don't want kids to mess their knee up. Yeah. But. I can just pull it up a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if I get here, mm -hmm. like to my single leg spin out, yeah. then I just step up. Yeah. You know, yeah. body cradle or whatever. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I just. The defense is. Starting to evolve a lot more. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just trying to figure out all the little things like on that spin out when you were throwing the head, like you, like that's our, that's yeah, that's our defense to it. Yeah. That's our defense to that spin out. You know, that's a lot too. That's getting better too. Like if I you pass my leg, just pass it in his double. Oh, yeah. Here, flow mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And getting children. Mm -hmm. Right here's a good yeah. counter now. Okay. So we got to make, but. So our finish now, and I got this from Roper. Mm -hmm. So if you're doubling me, I'm getting this pass. Probably it's always passing straight legs, right? Yeah. But then when I get here, it's trying to get hip down. Uh, back to this position. Yeah. So I'm in this forced roll. Go to sit right there. Uh, so it gives me, gives you go low and you transition back to high. Knee, really? Well, I'm scooping your knee. Yeah. So as I'm passing, here, I'm always thinking about shoulder to your knee so I can get to the sole and my feet drive and drive. Then when I get belly down, I'm going knee scoop, blocking your knee, and then pressure back. And then if I get you here, pull my foot in, because they'll hang on here. I can go chest, then I got you. Or if it's, if it's your top hand, I can turn to a half. If you grab with your top hand, I come here, mm -hmm. turn to the half. Mm -hmm. and so I got options to finish there. A lot of times those guys 
try to come out the back door with a leg pass and you're tying up my ankles, I'll never be able to step up. Mm -hmm. You know, because everybody's looking for our ankle now. So even if you high crotch me, you know, you got guys. Yeah. I get yeah. here and you don't change the far ankle, I'm going to beat you every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You almost have to let go of the high crotch to get there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, like, there's no way you can. Can I see, can I try the pass that you're doing? Yeah. Sure. So, so you're passing. Shoulder there. Yep. This is going to straight. So I go to the sole, sole. And I think about windshield wiper the foot out so yeah. it can't sit back. Yeah. Because once my foot gets outside my hip, I can't sit back and put weight on. So as you pass, and then start scooping with knee. this, scoop my knee with that knee. Yeah. And then just. Oh, I like that. Right this is there. One of my best positions. I like yeah. this a lot. So you can turn, mm -hmm. you can step over. You got all basically your forced roll yeah. positions. Plus, you're in a good spot to always turn towards the legs. Because I'm a turn towards the legs 99% of the time guy, but if I need to turn towards your head and stick you, mm -hmm. 15, 20 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if, man, if you're single in me, and yeah. you don't know that defense, mm -hmm. I can high leg pass this leg right here. Yeah. And if you don't follow, I just come up. Yeah. If you do follow, I'll just take you out here. Yeah. Right here, please. Obviously, you're gonna grab my hand, even if you lock my crotch. Still. Yeah. And I can't break your grip, Crab. I, if I can't, if I can't break your grip right here, I can still thread. Yeah. Oh, it's like like on that low single finish. He's getting my hand through. So like, I was close to that finish. I was doing more of a knee scoop, and then me and Roper did a camp in New Mexico last year, and he kept going to get to that forced roll position, which I really like. Because I mean, anytime I pass a leg. That's my finish, yeah. unless you don't follow, and then I just need to slide out the back door. Mm -hmm. But I definitely, like my guys can't like. I'm not teaching it well. They're like, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Right. But we're not able to do. You know, like turn. a back, back door turn. You know. Really. It's just like just not. Just a knee change thing. But we can, we can do this one. You know. Oh yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I'm good at that one, and sort of this. Good at that one, you know? Believe it or not, coming out the back door, like you said, and then yeah. changing knees so they can't work back into that ankle. I don't teach that at camp anymore just because, like you said, kids get so confused. It's hard. They'll, they'll, they'll knee slide out, mm -hmm. they'll get here, and then they won't turn. Yeah. They won't pivot and turn, and then knee change. So I just don't show it at all, and I'm like, hey, if you can get out the back door, then just hide your ankles and turn and face them, because it's the same thing as that Iranian position. If I'm here, they're going to be hooking. Well, if I'm here, they're not, you know. But probably our most successful Iranian counter right now is if I if you single and I stuff and cover right here yeah. I'm always setting this anchor mm. so when you post and split and you try to bring me up you come straight over the top and yeah. back into place and then that way it teaches me to fight my head to the mat be able to wrestle up because all these guys trap arms and waist and lace like Askren would force that position mm. you know what was your go-to there when they split was. When I split, yeah. When I get this high ring here, uh, I would I would fall left. No, I'm, a, I'm a cross guy, and then sit. So you're trying to split every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I push back to my single. I can I can usually push and force it. Oh, so you're just getting your foot back to the mat. Yeah. So like elbow, or thinking like a, a knee kick to the chest, enough to to give me someone athletic, you know. But sure. like, to be able to push myself back. Here. But that kind of goes back to feet in the mat. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. So I, when you here, I'm coming. I'm trying to open my hips here. Yeah, let me think. Go right side. Yeah. Some, you're bringing your. I'll get a little bit more opposite, turn to help. You're, you're bringing opposite leg behind you. So you're basically high leg and over in the air. Here. Yeah. Oh man, I feel like I'm gonna put myself in spot. Well, well, I think my shoulders are high too. Yeah. Maybe mine a little bit lower. Yeah. Somewhere here. Yeah. That's where I am. Yeah, a little bit more. I know. Healing here. Healing wizard. Also, or I can split. Where's my low? What did Mike show at your camp? Hand fight stuff? Mike now? Split. Split's uh, chasing the corner. Oh. Couple of pressure release things? No penetration. Yeah. 
Oh, that's just me getting old trying to figure out how to still attack legs. <laughs> I just come up on all this stuff. So I was like, we got those camp too, and I was just like, hmm, let me be all sorry. Maybe it's time to go split step. You know? Oh yeah, it's all it's it's time to be old and be huh. be very, very calculated with our bend over at the waist to grab a leg, so um on that angle pass, that pass you don't split the leg. Uh, yeah. But that, this guy comes over with you. Nice. But so that's what we were I talking will. about. If I double leg and he passes the leg. Some of the new technique of defending is getting my leg over, and then as he bellies down, popping and getting my knee in his shin. But even the I one you like, like just when you go first teach how kids, how kids roll with it, like here, pass me. Yo, I stopped. This is what oh, Max was doing, asking. Yeah, but, but you're still coming up. Yeah, but if I can get that hip down, that's why I like that, and that's why I don't really teach the high leg over much, is because that finish is probably the one finish that can beat the high leg. But he can get the. I'll get caught every now and then because I get so comfortable in my leg pass not getting stopped. But if I'm, if I get here, we get to this pass and he tries to high leg over and I get here. Yeah. He's one in. Yeah. See, Even funny. with his foot behind him. He's, it's that's it's what the we same position teach, though. Is that foot behind him and keep that hip mm. off. Him. Yeah, but if I get here, I get there quick. Right. If I, but if I'm just normally trying to pass a leg and knee slide out the back door, he'll beat me every time. So if I'm just trying to pass a leg here and knee slide out the back door, I'm going to get sprawled on here because I don't have my hip down and my elbow above the knee. You know, if I don't have my elbow above the knee, even if I'm down here on my pass, yeah, I'm not going to be able to sit. But I don't have to work my elbow above the knee and then start peeling, get my feet back in the mat. That's what I was telling him. When you high leg, put your foot in the mat and drive back into it. That's how we teach you high leg. Uh, you mean the butt over? Or you mean the yeah. No, that's what he's doing. Yeah, because you're kind of sitting, so he's passing. Pass. I'm passing here. And I talk about heels to my butt, shoulder to the knee, palm to the sole. So I don't pass bent legs. We always have to pass straight legs. So as I get this leg part of my body, my feet are driving. So even when he does high leg over, I can get this. Really yeah, but differently. Yeah. yeah, that way. But still, though, I, I like this position. Like, oh no, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Well, about even it. if so, even if I get stuck here, so you this up and drive yeah. that way. Even if I get this here, and we got here a bunch just far in a minute ago, even if I can't get my left hip down and sit back, what I can do is start up. working. Yeah, it doesn't Cause, matter. Because this is the way I think about scrambling. I gotta have more feet in the mat, and I gotta have one or both of his feet off the mat, but not just off the mat. Weight towards his head, because yeah. that makes him unathletic. That's why I like watching you, because it, yeah, I feel the same way. But this dude never has on the mat. It feels like, like these things, like I can't do half the shit you do. Right. Like, I can do well, like I like I talked about before, Ken, before you guys even got here. He was he was successful because he was so creative. But his creativity, most people would say that's bad technique. That's bad technique. And then when it started working at a high level. That's good technique, that's good technique, right? You've been through that your whole life, I'm sure. That's bad technique, don't turn that way. That's bad technique, turn the other way. That's bad technique, put your head on this side. And then he kept doing it and kept winning. They were like, hey, that's good technique, keep doing it. Same thing happened to Joey Laser when he got the UNI. And Schwab finally was like, okay, that's good technique, do it. You know, he embraced it, look where he came from. He couldn't have come from a worse place to teach a guy, like to coach a guy like Joey Lazy. You know, that was just like him. Just everything you think that feels right to do, do the opposite. Well, but some of that's just good. We're not good at that coaching, but expanding the way you think about 100%. it. 100%. Like Deuce and I, over the last 10 years, have stopped saying bad, good technique. We said, I wouldn't normally do it like that. Does it work at a high level? Well, if it works at a high level, good yeah. technique. If it works for you at a high level, good technique. But even as a coach, I don't want to do shit on something. Oh, no. I, I, you know, I wouldn't I can normally do it like this. Maybe you try to for sure. instead of saying good and bad, because so many coaches do that. It, it, it breaks down your ability to be good. Our Thursday practices are here's a concept, go play. And then bring it back in, what is everybody feeling? They almost coach the whole practice themselves. But the good thing is, is I'm getting to watch how my guys process. Right. I get to show them a concept, say, make the guy push back into you and then get a leg attack. That's the concept. And then I'm watching guys, I'm watching guys release with a with a sidestep or a misdirection step, and then I'm watching guys release and just disappear. I'm watching guys still trying to penetrate when they don't need to. And then I'm starting to see where everybody's brains is at because I didn't pre-program them, right? I didn't pre-program them to drive, drive, drive. Then when they drive back, step left, step right, right hand to the anchor, single leg. I just say, get them to pressure back in, 
find a leg attack, find a find a takedown, well, and then I get much I get so much feedback from it. And you can coach more individualized, and you can create more critical thinking. One hundred percent. It's more a bit coaching and teaching become very oh, Student, you're a teacher. You come from that whole process, man. It's critical thinking. It's problem solving, yep. and convincing them that they have to learn how to problem solve. Sure. I for so long felt like that if I didn't come in and give them two hours of machine technique, whistle, I mean, I've never blown a whistle at practice, but I mean, whistle starts, that I wasn't doing my job as a coach, because I get them, what, four or five days a week? Right. Limited amount of time, 10 hours. That's you know, 10 so hours a week, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things. So I'm like, ah, I gotta get it in. But then their creative side dies. The, the Jason Welch in them dies, like for real. You know what I'm saying? Because it's stifled. It's smothered. It's all this routine robotic stuff, which we have to do. But dude, one day a week and just watching them go. And some kids will leave practice and not get a ton, but that's their problem because they didn't engage. I've had kids that are second practice. You know, their first practice was Wednesday, their second practice was Thursday. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to do it today because I got a bunch of new kids. I do it. They figure it out. Their parents might be looking at me and being like, what is this? What am I paying for? You know what I'm saying? I paid to get my kid coached, not my kid to coach himself. But man, once they start figuring that out, imagine, I mean, and you had to do it because you were inventing your own style. Well, so you were coaching yourself at a young age, whether you realized it or not, right? You had so many good coaches, too. How Was your dad the main guy? Yeah, I think for that it was just like, there were so many that ended up being like self-coaching. So like, we had a small group of like guys with like a personal wrestling club, and we'd go to a clinic, 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 go here for a club for a few months, and it was just kind of like all piecemeal, and bring it back and be like, oh, let's, what is in this trouble? Like you said, just creative sure. like, hey, this is working, this isn't working, fill, fill, fill. But this feels good to me. Yeah. Why does it feel good to me, and can we make it work? You know what I'm saying? Like, he showed me that high leg. It feels terrible to me, but if I spend some time in it, right. you know, then it maybe starts feeling good, or maybe I change something that works for me as opposed to his exact way. Well, and that's you the know? balance, right? Like, how do you get in reps without running a practice that's just... That's, like I said, I just chose one day a week that this is going to be our conceptual practice, and that's what we're going to do. So show up with a sharp freaking mind. It's not, it's not physically intense. You know, it can be. Once we get rolling, if everybody starts feeling themselves, we'll get going. But if we just think and problem solve for an hour and a half, two hours, I'm fine with that. Because, man, I'm telling you, the, the, the more I coach our higher level guys, the more I realized I've conditioned them. You know, we're 12 years into our club. The real, more I've realized I've conditioned them practice mindset to where a lot of those guys just walk in and their brain shuts off and they just get ready to work. You know, so I started talking to them about purposeful work. Right. Purposeful work isn't just coming in and doing what I ask you. Purposeful work is coming in and being engaged here, but also being engaged here. I got to feel good about what I'm doing too. You know what I'm saying? So if my heart's in it and I'm feeling like I'm making gains while I'm engaged and while I'm creating new concepts for me, I'm not just doing what coach is yelling at me. I'm not just doing what's listed on the drill board on the wall. You know, and that's, that's, that's where when you release a little bit of the control as a coach, you start to panic a little bit because that's what you're so used to. These guys are here for me to guide them, and I'm asking them to guide themselves for today. You know, but man, the growth that they get just by learning how to problem solve on their own, or at least that makes them go out and then come back and say, hey coach, I'm here, I'm stuck. Whereas most kids, if you just run a practice, they won't ask you one question. You think about how many practices, camps you've ran, kids won't. There'll be 100 kids at camp and two kids are the kids that ask questions. You know, that doesn't, to me, that doesn't tell me they're not engaged, but if they're asking questions, I know they're engaged. I'm 100% confirmed they're engaged, you know? So, I mean, but I, I mean, I'm lucky enough to get to do this many camps to see this many different skill levels and backgrounds and walks of life and cultures and geographic locations that I get a huge the vision of sense. all of it as opposed to when I'm yeah, in my club, you know, when I'm in my club, you know, it's my guys, you know, and I know them and I know their tendencies and, you know, I kind of know what they're going to bring to the, bring to the mat room every day, but man, getting out here and like, this is what I'm going to do. Holy smokes, this group isn't ready for it. Let's change it to here. You know, that makes me, that makes me problem solve. That makes me problem solve the way I teach stuff. The way I articulate, the way I progress. You know, like I, I didn't know that pressure release stuff was going to fly today. It could have been a disaster. You know, because we did single legs a lot in hand fighting yesterday and we did okay. But that's a much different concept that kids, most kids have never felt before. Right. You know, but it's been pretty good. I mean, as long as they understand 
disappear, let them go, get to something, man, we're starting to get chunks in, right? We're getting the chunks. You know, so I mean, but by no means, man, I got it figured out. I mean, I, I, I stayed after the Wabash camp after I did.